was trained as a physicist and I went into physics because that's the study of the, the fundamental properties of the universe and how it works and then how to use that understanding of those fundamental properties to understand the complex phenomenon around it. And the neat thing about NIST is, is we can take um, our understanding of those fundamental properties to build very, very sensitive instruments. And then we can turn that around and use those instruments to once again study the properties of the universe. So we made a, a camera based on superconducting transition head sensors that's to uh, measure a type of radiation called submillimeter radiation that's uh, a little bit higher frequency than microwaves. So it's not like the microwaves in your microwave oven, but it's, it's uh, the electromagnetic signals are wiggling faster. And by looking at this submillimeter signal, you can study the process of how stars form, how galaxies form, and even how planets form. But in order to do this, we had to make a much larger array of transition head sensors than anyone had ever made. In fact, the largest one before that had been just um, several hundred pixels, and we needed to make one with 10,000 pixels. And with 10,000 pixels, it's still a lot less pixels than in, is in a CCD camera, but, it, but they're much, much more sensitive. Um, and no one had ever developed a way to look at 10,000 pixels all at the same time. And we needed to develop a special type of integrated circuit, like the circuits that computer manufacturers made, only using a totally different type of technology to look at this camera. And that was to use superconducting materials to make a special integrated circuit where there's a little circuit looking at each of these pixels. And this is actually the world's largest superconducting integrated circuit. And it was made right here in Boulder in the clean room. So we uh, put an array of superconducting transition and sensors um, at a telescope called the South Pole Telescope. Um, called that because it's out the South Pole. Um, and that turns out that that's an excellent place to look at the signals from the cosmic microwave background because it's very high and it's very dry and it's dark for six months a year. And it's there right now measuring the properties of this mysterious cosmic microwave background radiation. And by measuring those properties, we can look for the signal of gravitational waves from the Big Bang. Uh, we can try to measure many other things about the universe, like the, uh, the mass of these particles called neutrinos, um, and also uh, the properties of dark energy, which is this mysterious substance that is causing the universe to accelerate faster and faster all of the time. So the transition head sensor actually just use is a little piece of metal film that's a very special type of film called a superconductor. And superconductors are special because due to a, a strange quantum phenomenon, at some temperature, they uh, lose all resistance to the flow of electrical current. So the electrical current, for instance, if you have a ring of, of a superconductor and you start electrons flowing in it and then walk away and come back five years later, the electrons will still be flowing. Um, but at some temperature, um, you start developing resistance again and then the electrons will stop flowing. And that temperature where you go from having no resistance to the flow of current to having real resistance, if you measure that resistance, it's a very accurate thermometer. Well, the remarkable thing about this type of sensor, first of all, is that it can be used to measure almost anything that can be converted to heat. And that's why they're very effective over essentially eight orders of magnitude of the electromagnetic spectrum. From uh, microwaves, which people are from, familiar with from their microwave ovens, all the way up through visible light, x-rays, and gamma rays. Um, uh, because all of these things can be converted to heat. Um, and so any application that uses one of these uh, frequencies, either microwaves or, or gamma rays, um, there, there's always a reason to look for more sensitive detectors. And it turns out that these sensors are the most sensitive way to do some applications, to measure both microwaves and gamma rays for some purposes. And here's some examples is, for gamma rays, it turns out that you can use these sensors to measure the emissions from spent nuclear fuel. 
And uh, this is something that the DOE is very interested in because it turns out you can potentially use this to determine what is in the fuel non-destructively just to looking, by looking at its gamma ray emission in a way that they weren't able to do before. And that can help with treaty verification. And on the other end of the spectrum, with these uh, microwaves that I mentioned, uh, you can actually use these to study the fundamental properties of the universe by looking at what's called the cosmic microwave background, which is essentially the afterglow of the Big Bang that at this point is in the microwave frequencies. And if you can measure the detailed properties of, of these microwaves, you can determine many things about the universe, about its geometry, that it's flat. Um, you can measure uh, uh, how much dark energy and dark matter and these other exotic things we don't yet understand there are. And you could even search for gravitational waves that we believe must have been produced by the Big Bang. So we uh, put an array of superconducting transition and sensors um, at a telescope called the South Pole Telescope. Um, called that because it's out the South Pole. Um, and that turns out that that's an excellent place to look at the signals from the cosmic microwave background because it's very high and it's very dry and it's dark for six months a year. And it's there right now measuring the properties of this mysterious cosmic microwave background radiation. And by measuring those properties, we can look for the signal of gravitational waves from the Big Bang. Uh, we can try to measure many other things about the universe, like the, uh, the mass of these particles called neutrinos, um, and also uh, the properties of dark energy, which is this mysterious substance that is causing the universe to accelerate faster and faster all of the time.